Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. Uh, today we're in Exodus chapter 12, verses 37 to 41. Now the sons of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot aside from children. A mixed multitude also went up with them along with flocks and herds, a very large number of livestock. They baked the dough which they had brought out of Egypt into cakes of unleavened bread, for it had not become leavened since they were driven out of Egypt and could not delay, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. Now the time that the sons of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years, and at the end of 430 years to the very day, all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So the Hebrews gathered here and they commenced their journey. This is the Exodus. Kaboom, we're on the way. And there's different questions about exact locations. Uh, where is Ramses? Where is Sukkoth? Where were those things? There's a lot of questions like this, but the biggest question that seems to be asked is the question about how many people actually, how many Hebrews actually left Egypt and were in the Exodus to the Promised Land. Now in verse 37, we're given a number, 600,000 men. Now, that wasn't counting the women, the children, necessarily the elderly. So we're looking at a number perhaps in the realm of two million. Uh, we're really not given that number. Only the military men, only the men are counted here. And don't forget there's a mixed multitude in the bunch too. So how big is this group? There's a lot of people who find the number of 600,000 men plus, the, plus everybody else to be just, a, just way too large of a number. They really can't believe that this could possibly be. And not only that, but this number didn't include the Levites. Now, I was looking ahead at some of this here, and let me just throw a couple of business items to you here. Exodus 38, 26, Numbers 146, Numbers 232. Those, all three of those give an exact number. It says the men were numbered at 603,550. Uh, and that number didn't include the Levites. So the Levites were more than that. The Levites weren't numbered in those. When you go out to Numbers 2651, there's a census that gives 601,730 persons from 20 years old and up, along with 23,000 more who were Levites. Now, when you also go to the next uh, book after the Torah, we go to the uh, book of Joshua, and we've got all the conquest of the different land there. It seems like it would support a larger number rather than a smaller number. So there's a word here, Eleph, which uh, is used in different ways and translated with a rather wide range of translations. And it's translated thousand, and in some places it's translated other things. So some have also taken and reduced this number and uh, suggest very strongly a number between 20 and 40,000 men left instead of 600,000 men. So those are some of the numbers and some of the questions. But when we get to the exact numbers, and we're giving such exact numbers, 603,550, not just once, but several times, it seems like that is indicating to me the larger number rather than the smaller number. Now, how is God going to feed these people in the wilderness, whether it's a larger number or a smaller number? Well, again, we come to, a, but that's easily solved because we're coming up on chapters where God's going to provide manna. He's going to provide miraculous uh, provision for food for their 40 years or so in the wilderness. We won't jump ahead. We'll come to that fairly soon here. It's not too many chapters further on. So God, that, that, the food, the eating problem, the feeding problem is solved. And you know, it's understandable that we want to match the stories of the Bible to archaeological evidence. But remember, at the end of the day, the Bible's in an inspired revelation. We're not to base our belief in the Bible on the archaeological evidence, but to base, but really we need to start with belief in God's word and work it out from there. My faith isn't dependent on evidence from something that happened 3,000 years ago, which may or may not exist or have been laid down for us, or even it might be there, but it hasn't been found yet. You don't need to find Noah's Ark for me to help me to think that Noah's Ark was a real thing. What the Bible says about the human heart, about the human condition, is so spot on that that, to me, is, is the mightiest evidence of the truth of God's word. I, I don't need the other pieces. If you give me some evidence for other stuff, and many things have been found, that's interesting and it's useful. But my, my belief is it comes from the way that the Bible speaks of the human heart. No other writing. I've read the Quran and all these other things. 
and not to downgrade or push down on any of these other uh, allegedly inspired writings or holy writings, but none of them, in my experience, matches. It, gets, it even gets into the ballpark where the Bible is in terms of describing human experience, the human heart. When I look at the corruption in my own heart and when I look at the, the plan that God has, the vision for humanity that he has in the Bible, and how clearly he can understand, how well he understands human nature, I have no question that the God of heaven and earth has has presented this, uh, these writings re preserved and revealed through these writings the way things are in this universe. Do you know what I believe? I believe that most often people don't want to practice what they find in the Bible because they have a commitment to something in their heart that, that, that their conscience tells them is wrong. And that's what's getting in the way. They don't want to believe that God is real or the Ten Commandments are real or that there is a morality because the Bible's condemning something that they are stuck to. They, 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 can't, they don't want to give, give it up. And so they throw away the whole scripture because they're stuck on some little sin thing, some momentary passing sin thing that in all eternity is only going to be a problem for them. They've got to give it up. Friends, as we read the Bible, we should pray that God will search our hearts, uh, reveal to us the, his way, and lead us in the way everlasting, and help us to repent and turn to the King of heaven. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning.